sponsored by DCP Player, a simple way to view a DCP on any Windows-based PC. So Jim, follow up. You blew people away with Avatar. You, you blew been, people? You, no, you oh, blew people away. <laughs> <laughs> blew people away with Avatar. You've announced sequels. What can you tell us about the technologies that you, you're planning in your toolbox to raise the bar? Well, there's a lot of stuff that's Avatar specific that we're doing just to improve the, you know, the workflow and working with, with performance capture and, and a lot of new software tools and so on. And the, the, uh, uh, the real time uh, virtual production suite, um, you know, and that stuff's all kind of under, under the radar right now. But we're scrambling around behind the scenes, you know, creating a lot of new stuff to, just to make it, just to make the, the, the whole process of making the movie easier. But obviously, I'm thinking about the display end of it as well and how it's going to look in, in theaters. And I fully intend to make uh, the next two Avatar films uh, at a higher frame rate. I want to author the films at a higher frame rate. We're still we're looking very seriously at, at 48 and 60 frames a second. And because I believe that the image that we can put up in the theater with a very, very tiny incremental cost to what people have already spent to convert to digital will be profoundly better. And I think that, you know, as show people, and I think everybody in this room, we're here to put on a show. Um, you know, as show people, we need to constantly be upping our game. We've got to, we've got to fight this. It's like having an immune system. You're constantly fighting off all these attacks. And, and the, the movie industry has fought off one attack after another after another over, over time that, that everybody has said this is going to be the end of, of the, the theatrical movie going. And it hasn't happened. And, you know, we're under, uh, you know, assault now, shortening, shortening windows, you know, premium video on demand and all that sort of thing and, and uh, uh, piracy and so on. We fight back by being great, great showmen, you know, and, and, and putting a great image up there, putting great sound out there and uh, you know so my new campaign and if you're interested in this at all I'm, I'm doing a demo tomorrow morning at, at 8 a.m. here of higher frame rates we went out and did a big comprehensive test uh, demonstration so if you if you want to see what that what that looks like uh, we're going to show it then so not just steal from your presentation tomorrow but is there anything more you could add about frame rates and 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 that process and, and where you think that can go well, you know, the, the thing is that, that everybody's like, oh, please, no, you were here in 2005 and we ought to change the whole the whole industry. And George and I were, were telling you that, that uh, 3D was coming and Jeffrey has been indefatigable in telling you that 3D is coming. And, it, and you know, it came and it did, look what happened. We're all making more money. So, uh, you know, what, what I, you know, hope that you can uh, think about this is not that, oh no, we're going to have to spend money, but this is a way of actually feeling good about the investment we already made because those digital projectors are already running at very high frame rates. Uh, the ones that are doing the, the triple flash process are already running at 144 frames a second. That's an inconceivable speed in a film-based kind of ecosystem. But, you know, when you, when you project, when you author and project your movie at 48 or 60 frames a second, it becomes a different movie. It's, if, if the 3D shows you a kind of a window into a reality, the higher frame rate takes the glass out of the window. In fact, it's just a reality. I mean, it, it's, it's really stunning how good it looks. And, you know, I'll talk a lot more about this tomorrow, but, but I think this is, a, this is an area we should really look at. And the other one is obviously light levels. And, you know, anybody who's working in, in the 3D world um, is constantly sensitive to the pushback that we're getting from audiences about the fact that when I put the glasses on in the movie theater, the screen goes dark and it doesn't look as good in terms of brightness alone um, as, the, as the 2D. So light levels are a big issue. And there are solutions, there are some solutions that are coming, there are some solutions that exist right now. And uh, I think the exhibition community really needs to, to be aware that this is an issue and this is the next place where we really need to make, to, to up our game, is on the light levels of the screen for 3D. So Jeffrey, back in 2009, you made a very big bet. You bet on 3D, you transformed the way that you produce motion pictures. There weren't a lot of screens at the time. That was a pretty big bet. Um, all of us, or most of us in this room probably saw Kung Fu Panda and, and Puss in Boots on Monday. Obviously, it seems like every time we see DreamWorks movies, we're, we're seeing a raising of the bar every six months or so. So, how do you approach the innovation in your company, and what should we know about over the next five years in, in, in your business in animation? Well, I think, uh, you know, uh, the digital, uh, evolution 
for animation has actually been a revolution. Um, it, it is, uh, you go back and you look, you know, when John Lasseter, uh, actually started by George Lucas, delivered that first CG animated movie uh, in 1994, and here we are 15, 16 years later, and it, it is a tool that uh, more than uh, transformed the experience, it actually transformed the art of these films and how they are made and, and, and how they are experienced by our audiences. And in a way, it actually reinvented what animation means to the world today. Um, that, uh, uh, that uh, innovative spirit is actually in the DNA of the entire enterprise of people that are working in animation today. And so at every stage, at every level, we keep trying to push the, the technology. And very specifically for, for us, um, you know, we have 250 uh, uh, engineers uh, that are working purely on R&D efforts to see that the best tools are put in the hands of our storytellers with the ambition that every time you come into a movie theater, we need to give you more than you saw before. That each time there's going to be something that is a wowie. It's wowie, I've never seen something like that before. And so, and then the other thing is, is just the experience of it. I'm sure, you know, Jim will tell you, having worked and, and now seen the results of his work in 3D, the knowledge of, that he now has today in terms of how that will affect what he does on the next movie, you know, is, is going to be by a factor of 10. So knowledge, we're just building so much knowledge. It's so early <laughs> in the process. And um, so even when we look today at movies that are coming two and three, four years from now, there is a whole new revolution, at least in the animated field. Uh, George uh, visited with us at our campus in Northern California about 10 days or so ago. We showed him uh, some of our next generation tools that literally are going to finally end up in the hands of our artists at the end of this year. And uh, I, I think he would be the first to say it was like, this is a guy who's seen it all. I know he hadn't seen anything like this before. So it's very exciting. So, sorry, go ahead. I, I would just say one thing in this little line, of, which is uh, what I said you know, back when uh, we were here before, showing the first 3D tests and uh, whatnot, uh, and to the people that were shooting, I said, where we are in digital, and it's still where we are in digital, is like 1900 in the, in the cellular chemical process. We are just at the very beginning of the technology. We are just scratching the very beginning surface. And it's the same thing now, I say, with financially with projectors and cameras and everything. Once you go digital, once you spend basically the big bucks to get in the game, everything after that is infinitely cheaper. Because to make changes in digital, is not hugely expensive, which is, we know, with 3D, with going to 60 frames. With, we can go many millions of miles on a little tiny bit of gas. Once you've got the right digital equipment to start with, you can modify it, move it. That's the great thing, and the same thing with him. They are developing new chips. They're developing new technology. It's not that expensive to buy the chip and do it in. It's not that expensive ultimately even to get the, the, the people to reprogram and come up with new ideas to use it. It's nothing like the original investment. Once you've got that investment made, everything plays out after that. You get all these goodies and they're going to be constantly advancing because the rest of the world is digital. And, you know, the chips that are being developed that uh, Jeff is working on. That's you know for NASA, for for you know huge corporations, for all kinds of people. It's not just for the little tiny film industry. We're just getting to get the fruits of all that labor. But there's a huge market, and it doesn't di differentiate between the movie business and the car business or the insurance business or anything else. So you get advantage of the fact that we're in the same 
genre or in the same technology that everybody else is. 